The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 4th, 5th, the October 5th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Send me an email. Send that early and send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger Send, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, I get all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The Dow's off 400 points, one and three tenths, one and six tenths for the S&P, or 63 points. A little over 2% for the NASDAQ, 100, 250 points. The same for the semis, or the Russell, that's uh, 39 points to the downside. Same for the semis, 2% plus, 52 points. The trannies are off one and a quarter percent, 156 points. A sea of red out there, including gold. Gold is off 12 bucks, 17.18. Looks like it's off its lows. We'll take a look at gold today. Silver down 80 cents, twenty dollars and thirty cents is its current print. Uh, lights be crude. Trade out at 87.70. It's up a buck 18. Natural gas up two pennies at 6.86. And the 30-year Treasury is back two full ticks. 126.20 is the current print. Now leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside individual stock-wise. Is there anything? Pioneer Natural Resources up about four bucks or one and a half percent. Lamb Weston Holdings up three and a half bucks or four percent. To the downside, Enphase Energy off 33 bucks, 11 percent. Mercado Libre off 30 bucks. Karuna Therapeutics down 21. EPAM Systems off 20. Solar Edge down 18. SVB Financial back 15 bucks or so. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers out there. But let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. We'll switch over to the white background charts out here. This will give us uh, kind of our intraday time frames as well to take a look at. And that's what we have. In the upper left-hand side, what do we know? We know that yesterday, well, first we know that we've got to buy the D-point pattern. That was formed with the uh, bullish engulfing candle on Monday. Price was inside a bullish structured profile on Tuesday when price was able to get above the CS Mini, above that red oscillator and change line, and improve the odds that price would go tackle those sellers. And sellers won so far. The sellers are located at the top of the profile. The top of that profile is 38.07. So we're seeing a natural pullback. Now, in a daily perspective, we would expect or anticipate the pullback would get back to its oscillator and change line at 3708. So that's one possibility. Now, the number's going to change up and down a bit, but you use that as a range. Now, there's not a topping signal inside the daily time frame, but we do know where sellers are loaded, and they were up at that 3807. And as that was taking place on a five-hour time frame, the ES Mini was forming a TD nine-count top. Right. Whenever anything gets to resistance, what we like to look at is the intraday time period, see if they are confirming that there's going to be some type of top short term pullback. Maybe it's a major top. We don't know. But uh, in fact, that's what we got with the five hour time frame chart, the four hour time frame chart, the two hour time frame chart, a top on the 60 minute, a top on the 30 minute. Top on the 50 minute. I believe it was also a top on the 10 minute chart. So, this worked textbook wise with regard to understanding what the market was doing. Now it's up to you and I to try to figure out where is the market headed to. Well, if we just uh, simply go from left to right out here on the five hour time frame chart for the ES Mini, a team, when you get a valid top there, 
price will typically pull back to test support. Well, it turns out that the first real key level of support here is at the bottom of its profile. That's at the 37.33 level. Price has gotten down to 37.62. So you've got price, uh, the, uh, the profile at the 37.33 area, and you've got a 37.24, it's red oscillator and change line. I would expect that that area will get tagged and hit. That suggests a little bit lower price. If we take a look at the 240-minute chart out here, it too forming a TD9 count. The oscillator and change line having changed color. Now, that's important because if we get a successful test and rejection, this is the bullish by the D point area, at least based upon the 240-minute chart. Now, I'll expand this chart out. You had a TD9 count pattern that topped right out at the breakdown resistance level of 3805. Now, if this area can hold, this, uh, by the way, this candle does not complete until 2 p.m. So 11.11 in the morning is a bit too early to call. But price is sitting at the support level right now, which is at the um, 37.42 area. In the bottom of that profile, 37.45, we're trading at 37.43. So this is something to watch. If this is going to identify the bottom, we'll see some kind of turn in the intraday, the shorter term, even shorter term time frame charts, 10, 15, 30 minutes, and so forth. Let's keep going left to right. On a two-hour time frame, the two-hour time frame is currently in bar number eight. This bar does not complete until 12 noon. You need bar number nine to complete. In order for a TD9 count bottom to complete on the two-hour time frame chart, bar number nine, the one that completes at two o'clock, will have to close below 37.66 and a quarter. That's the only pattern that I see out here. Had a nice TD9 count top. Maybe it's going to get a TD9 count bottom. Maybe that's going to be near the 37.17 area, the TD9 count breakout area. If we look at the 60-minute time frame chart, price right now I have formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Price is pulled back to test its breakout level of support at 37.35. There's no bottom pattern here just yet, but sometimes the bottom can be just pulling back to a key level of support. So 37.35, so it has accomplished that task. Now, it places below profiles out here. And uh, before, and so we're going through this, and what we will then also do is go take a look at the short-term TAS market breadth especially as we get into these shorter term time frames like 60 and 30. We want to see if there's bullish crossovers, bearish crossovers, how many are trading above top of profile versus bottom of profile out here, because that can assist us in understanding the potential energy to the upside. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart, Rhodes meant to mitigate top price point back to 37.35 as well. It's TD nine count breakout area. Now in the 30 minute chart, I really can't draw on an A to B equal CD pattern. There was never really much of a move to the upside. I mean, really I'd have to choose this bar right here and that's the bar from 2,200 hours last night because that made the low. And the high would also have to be the high of that bar. And I hate using the low and high of that bar for an A to B equals CD pattern. Otherwise, there's not been a kind of 0.382 retracement level. Doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed because price is back at its breakout level of support. That's at the 37.35 level. On a 15-minute basis, let's just simply expand this out here, see what we see. On a 15-minute basis, uh, what has Stevie got? Basically nothing, nada, zip, and zilch out there. So I don't have a, a bottom signal from the 15. Doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed again. The bottom could have come in based upon the 60-minute and the 30-minute time frame out here, as well as really the 240. Um, so let's go take a look at, oh, I see we're going to go to a break. I'll put this up on the screen here right now. This is going to be the shortest time frame that I have to understand market breadth for the S&P 500. And right now as we speak, 69 instruments or 85 instruments above the top of profile, 169 below the bottom. So rallying from here is going to be not so easy to do. Not that it can't do it, but the odds are stacked against it at the moment. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're trying to assess what the ES Mini is communicating to us. Uh, we know that the ES Mini on a daily basis, upper resistance, topping patterns for all of its intraday time periods. Now prices pulled back to areas of support on a couple of those time periods, the 240, the 60, and the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. Uh, and we were taking a look at market breadth before we went to that breakout there. It was still negative on a 30-minute basis. It is also negative on a 60-minute time frame. So as we take a look at it now, you know, the, the 240 and the daily are still bullish positive. And that's why it suggests that uh, this should there, we should be looking for a bottom to buy intraday, at least. Don't know whether price will take out that resistance level on the daily time frame. But because you've got that positive market breadth here, it says be looking for bottoms, patterns on those other intraday time periods. Now, the 60-minute time frame out here has got 151 instruments above profile. 274 below. So really, the uh, ES Mini has got its work cut out for it as we speak uh, right now. So I don't know that we've got a clear signal. Definitely an attempt out there. And your stops would be somewhere underneath the day's low, somewhere underneath the 37, 35 level. So let's go on. We've got a couple of questions. We can always come back to these charts here. We can rip apart the NQ on really anything. But first, let's do this. We've got a couple of requests that have come in through the Tiger's Den. I don't know if anything is. I see uh, maybe one, two... No, through email. So I don't want to get behind on those. Let's take care of the request inside the Tiger's Den first. The first one coming from Coda. Coda, nice to uh, see you, although I can't see you, but uh, you know what I mean. And his uh, request is to take a look at ticker symbol VNOM. Doesn't stick out uh, to me as to uh, what this is. Uh, just I don't remember. I don't know if I've looked at VNOM. That is Viper Energy Partners LP. And price is trading right now. It doesn't show. I've got some type of little data feed issue here it's not updating uh, just yet but i can share with you that price is really trading at 3142 not 3089 as shown on my screen well above 3103 coda a close above 3103 would be a bullish signal there we go now it's up to date uh, because closing above resistance is a bullish signal now that would suggest price getting back to its recent high out here that looks like the trading session of uh, september 14th now, on September 14th, as price was moving up there, Coda, as you know, there were a total of 537,000 shares. And the low of that candle session 
is 31.58. The high of today is 31.50, so it has not hit it yet. 85,000 shares have traded hands so far, so 85,000 in about two hours of time, so 85 times three, so we're about two. So it's going to be uh, quite a bit lighter on the volume. So, but watch, you know, if you do get a test and rejection, meaning it somehow tests 31.58 or above, closes back below it. Eh, not exactly what you want to uh, see out there. But right now, a trade above the top of the profile is bullish. Trade above the top of the weekly profile, uh, the weekly profile, as well as this green oscillator and change line is bullish. Suggest getting back to those highs, same high that we took a look at. The uh, monthly time frame had a TD9 count top. And uh, as well, yeah, just uh, and I sell the D point top. But both of those things really just took back Coda, took price back to support that green oscillator and change line. Price above the top of its monthly profile, so VNAM looks bullish. So I'm not sure what you were asking about there. I think maybe just to take a look at it. But it's bullish on the monthly. It's bullish on the uh, weekly. It is bullish on the daily as we speak. Right now, you, you're long and you want to add more. So I don't know that I would add more right now because price is pushing into that you know, little swing point with lighter volume. But on a pullback uh, for sure, if I take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart here with you just to see if there's been any kind of signals of any kind of a pullback. Really, the best one came back here at uh, really at 10 o'clock in the morning. It was just after that on September 27th. That was a signal. You had a TD9 count pattern that formed at about uh, 1,600 hours on the 28th, but that pullback was, you know, no, no real bottom signal there. Um, yeah, I just don't see anything from a pullback standpoint. So uh, I'm glad that you're long. It makes sense to be long. As far as a pullback, I think you're going to have to wait just to see if one forms or starts and then try to identify some type of short-term bottoming signal out there. So I do hope that helps you out. And uh, you said, where would be a spot to add? You know, um, again, I'd, I'd, I'd really be focused more on the intraday charts to look for some type of pattern. Here, for example, let's just say that uh, the market turns back down. This this market, VNOM, turns down from here. I'd be looking at 30.01 would be a nice uh, area. That's a TD9 count breakout level. Remember, just like we were taking a look at the ES Mini, pulling back to those breakout areas, even though you don't have a bottom pattern, that can be the bottom. That's where price had broken out from. So that's the only thing that I've got on a 30-minute time frame out there. I do hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Um, the next question coming in from Inno Visual. And, you know, this is inside the Tiger's. Now, let's take a look at uh, Apple. He'd like to take a bite out of the apple. And uh, nothing like a good apple. I like those Honeycrisp apples. And I like the big ones out there. For some reason, that's just a uh, – now, I grew up in in, uh, in Michigan, Detroit, really, area, in, in, one of the, in a couple of the suburbs. But uh, we used to there would be apple trees, um, you know, at our elementary schools. I remember going out there and just pulling them off the trees and eating them. Man, that was a beautiful thing. Right around this time of the year, as I believe. Yeah, September, October. And there's nothing like going to the cider mill on a Sunday, assuming you're not missing a good football game out there. All right. So let's take a look at Apple out here. What do we know about Apple? What do we? Apple's got to buy the D-point pattern. It formed that on uh, Monday out there when it formed that little bear bull sash candle. Price is really just trading with inside its daily profile. Support is at 139.39, resistance at 149.61. Price remains below its red oscillator and change line, so it's certainly not bullish. It should go target that red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 146.38. The reason why I say it should is because it has a valid bottom pattern, and price then usually goes and tackles um, a level of, in this case here, resistance. That would be that oscillator and change line. Now, if price can get above 146.37, you're looking at this a bearish structure profile formed out here. So the sell zone would be between 149.61 and 153.02 out there. Now, the fact that this profile formed below the prior profile tells you that we've got a downtrend in place. You didn't need the profiles to tell you that for Apple. But um, this says, um, you know, be careful. This still could just be a counter trend move that we are seeing inside the market. If I take a look at the weekly time frame out here, the weekly time frame has a nice TD9 count bottom. And uh, but um, that being said, price might be headed back to the lower portion of its descending trend channel that is out there. That signal would come from the daily by simply closing back below Monday's low. That low out there would be 143.07. So we don't have that message, but that would be the message if you got to close below that. 
Monthly time frame chart, nice little TD9 count top. It's led to a consolidation basically with inside its profile out there. So not much more to add. If I look at a 30 minute time frame chart, just for a real intraday type signal out here, all that we've got is a nice TD9 count bottom that formed out here at 10 o'clock. See, Coda, this would be the type of pattern you would be looking for to add to your position out there. Some type of nice bottom on a uh, intraday, a 30 minute uh, time frame out there. And, uh, so what we have right now in a price found resistance near a second TD9 count break down area at the 146.72. Uh, so this is just kind of consolidating sideways out here. I don't really have a great signal on a 30-minute uh, time frame out there. So I do hope that helps you out in you know, visual with regard to Apple. Thank you again for the request. Let me go to the, uh, well, we're going to go to a break out here. So I'll go through the uh, numerous phone messages that come in, but probably only a couple of them. I really request from folks like you. That's who I want to hear from. 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow down 323, S&P's off 53, NASDAQ 100, 213, and the Russell is off 35. We're taking a look at Amazon. This is for Stash. It's coming in by email. It says, when will it return big? Lots of laughs, the horror. Well, if we take a look at Amazon out here right now, it is trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile out there. In fact, on uh, yesterday, where price found resistance basically was the center of that bullish structure profile, where you would expect it to find resistance. So... Price above its red oscillator and change line. Uh, you have a nice TD9 account bottom that is in place out here. So what this is telling you actually, Stash, is that unless price closes back below that red oscillator and change line, which it could, 
117.22, that this may be getting ready for liftoff right now as we speak. That's at least what the daily time frame chart tells us. The weekly time frame chart would say, hey, I'm giving you that signal, especially if I can stay above that red oscillator and change line. And if it can do that, by the way, that red oscillator and change line on a weekly time frame is currently printed at 118.15. We're trading at 118.62. So it's not like there's a lot of enthusiasm to the upside, but uh, that would be another signal out there. And the monthly time frame, all that I can do, share with you here is prices held. It's a monthly profile. It's been consolidating within it, so to speak. 108.93 is a key level of support. So then the only way to help stash out here, at least intraday, so the daily you've got a bottom. The weekly you've got a bottom. It was Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom, by the way. We take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart out here. Well, it just turns out that the 30-minute chart just formed a bottom. It did that at 11 a.m. as we were coming on the air. It was a TD nine-count bottom. It uh, is a new profile, I believe, that is formed on that 30-minute chart. It has the bottom of which is 118.08 and the top of which is at 119.23. Now, what I don't know, Stash, is can price take out the 109, 119.23? If it can, then price will go target its oscillator and change line, currently printed in the 120.42 level. So if you've been watching Amazon, if you believe that the counter trend uh, move has legs and is going to continue to rally, perhaps into... Uh, election day, then I would say that Amazon just gave you the buy signal. Now, it's a pretty easy trade, perhaps, because all you would have to do is put your stop below the low of today, 117.69. If price closes below that, probably you're looking at lower price, and you'd just they'll go ahead and take a, a small loss on that. It's a danger, a little bit dangerous. You know, it's a tough chart because of the fact that price yesterday found resistance at the center of that uh, move out there. But you've got bottoms. So I can uh, justify uh, taking the trade out here for sure. Just use a proper position sizing should you enter that trade in Amazon. So I hope that helps you out. Stash, thanks so much for the request. The next one, uh, next request coming in from uh, Alton. Alton, nice to hear from you. He says, good morning, Steve. If you have time, can you please look at Roblox, RBLX, and Adobe? want to know your thoughts on a potential entry point. Thanks. Have a great day. So let's get Roblox up on the screen. RBLX out there. Let's see if we can help Alton with a potential entry point into it. So right now, let me just uh, get over some other charts as well. RBLX. So we got Roblox right now trading out. It appears at 36, yeah, 3689. Price is with inside its daily profile. Is there any kind of bottom pattern that we've got out here on the daily time frame for Roblox? And the answer is going to be no. I really don't have one. Does not mean it hasn't bottomed. It means that the patterns that I use, like A to B equals CD patterns, you can see that's not even close. What I mean by that is here's A to B right there. And all we have to do is basically move this line over to the C leg. leg and that's just too far away from it to suggest that the bullish should golf and uh, from September 23rd was a confirmed by the D point. It's not. So we don't have that pattern. We don't have a TD9 count pattern. We don't have a wave seven pattern. Uh, we don't have anything. It does not mean it hasn't bottomed. It means I don't have a bottom signal for you, Alton. So you're looking for an entry point. You know, one entry point could be the bottom of the current profile. I don't have an indication yet that price is going to get back down there. If price did close today below 3680, odds would favor move back to 3491. Let's take a look at the weekly and the monthly chart, see if there's anything there that can help us out. TD9 count top has taken price back to support. That's its red oscillator and change line. The real entry point here could be then 2740, the weekly TD9 count breakout area. Hmm. Let me look at a 30 minute chart. Let's pull this over here. What do we have on a 30 minute chart for a Roblox? The 30 minute for Roblox is a TD9 count top. Price is busted through breakout support. Shouldn't have done that. No bottom signal here. This suggests that price could get down to 35.12. Now, you can see it's going to form bar number seven. There could be a TD9 count bottom. So, Alton, you may want to watch for that on a 30-minute basis to see if that pops up. But otherwise, this is suggesting lower price. So, I'm going to suggest here that uh, if you're looking for a bottom, those places would be uh, – the, the preference would be getting back to the uh, 2740 level. I don't know if we're going to get there. In that case, I'd go with 34.91 as the uh, first area. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Roblox. Adobe was the second request out there. ADBE is the uh, uh, ticker symbol for Adobe. So let's pull that up on our screen. Maybe we can find some better type of patterns out here that identified a bottom. Well, I can see the TD9 count pattern, and that uh, failed at a, did it fail? 
I think it failed. Yeah, that failed. However, on Monday, you have a bull sash candle. You can see we already had the A to B equal CD pattern drawn in here. This is more than a one-to-one. -one. So when Adobe generated on Monday, much like the markets out there, was a confirmed by the D point pattern. Now price is back inside its daily profile. That's assuming that it can stay above the bottom, which is 289.48. We're 291 right now. You are looking for an entry area. Then I would say now, basically, in the daily time frame, about now would be that spot. As long as price is able to hold that 289.48 level. The weekly time frame chart says if this was Friday afternoon, let's say 359 or 336 instead of 1136, we'd say this is going to form a nice weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And if that is the case, then we'll be looking at this move up to 322.16. The uh, monthly time frame chart has a TD nine count bottom as well. So what you've got out here, bottom on the monthly, it appears we might have a bottom on the weekly. Won't know till Friday, two more days. And you certainly have a bottom on the daily time frame. So what uh, Adobe is saying is it wants to rally. So about now, based upon the daily, weekly, and monthly charts, could or should be your entry area. Now, if we look at the 30-minute time frame, what do we have out here? What do we have out there? Not really much. But what we do have, let me see where this new profile low is at, 292.94. There's 292.94. Uh, I can't see it, so it's, it's hidden behind there. Um, you know, there's a, what I do see is an A to B equals CD to the downside that has completed at the 11.30 time frame with that bullish engulfing candle. So that looks like this. We'll just simply draw on the A to B line out here, and I'll just simply move that over to the C point. So there's your A to B. Here's your, whoops, move this over. Try to. Oh, the jeepers. Jeepers creepers. There we go. Now we move that over, and you can see this is more than a one-to-one -one A to B equal CD. There's your bullish engulfing candle, your Three River Morning Star. So we should at least see a rally. Now, because here's the issue. Here's the thorn in the side. Now that I clearly see that profile in a 30-minute base at 292.94, the profile formed above price. That says overhead supply. That's kind of like a trap out here. And that says this could just simply be a small counter trend rally up to the 293.56 area out there. If price can close above 293.56, and it wasn't a counter trend move, and price will go ahead and make its move to the 294 and then the 295.44 level. So a bit of a quandary here. But if you've been studying Adobe and you've been waiting for a buy signal, then I would say now is basically the time that you choose proper stop management. So Alton, I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Sea Roads with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow is down 281. S&P's off 46. Uh, we're going to take a look at Netflix in a moment here. Uh, just as a quick aside and an update out here, the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, uh, as far as market breadth for the ES Mini, this has changed to positive right now. So this rally, this little rally should continue is what it's signaling to us. Now I have 191 instruments above the top of the profile, 87 below the bottom. For the uh, NASDAQ 100, uh, that uh, TAS market breadth for the 30-minute time frame looks like this. Also uh, bullish, 49 above and 13 below. Again, that was for the 30-minute time frames for the ES and the NQ out there. Let's go take a look at a uh, request out here from SNP inside the Tiger's Den, and that's to take a look at Netflix out here. As I take a look at Netflix, what shows what shows up to me, the first thing that I notice out here at SNP, is one, there was a TD9 count top that formed on the trading day of August 15th. That led to a move lower. Price moves higher again. There is a Rhodes Mentum indicator top uh, that forms on September 20th right back where the TD9 count top formed. So what this tells me as I take a look at this, it confirms the uh, sideways consolidation. Price right now is pulling back into its bullish structured profile. Price has closed below this bullish structured profile a number of times on a daily basis uh, since this consolidation formed. So I would, be care I would be cautious and say I'd prefer if you're looking to add or enter your position in Netflix, I would say it would be more likely between the 216 and 222 area versus the bottom of this bullish daily structured profile at 226.48. Just my thinking at this stage here. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, you've got a nice confirmed Rhodes Mint Indicator top. Uh, price was above the top of its uh, weekly profile. So that looked pretty good out there. On a monthly basis, I got zip, zilch, nada, with the exception that price is actually trading with inside its profile. So let's try to uh, look at a 30-minute time frame. We're not going to try. We're actually going to do it out here. And the 30-minute time frame chart for Netflix shows us what? It shows a TD9 count top out here. That was at, uh, that formed at uh, October the 4th. That was yesterday. Price pulled back, found support at its breakout level, and it's now below that. Oftentimes, when you close below one level of support, you move to the next level of support. In the case of Netflix, that's at 222.17. No real bottom signal. The bottom signal that it could form, don't know whether it will. It'll take a while because it's only bar number five. Uh, so you've got uh, basically five more bars uh, after uh, noon. So you're looking at uh, about 2.30 or so is a TD9 count pattern. Now, I don't know whether it will form or not, but 221.17 is what the 30-minute chart is suggesting as a potential bottom area. And uh, that gets us uh, close to, not to it, but that gets us close to, well, really, it's in the bottom it's below the bottom of that uh, bullish structure daily profile. But I'd say that 222.42 is an area where you can start taking a look at putting on a position for Netflix out there. So hope that helps you out, S&P. Thanks so much for the uh, request. Now, back to the uh, charts here, the uh, ES Mini charts. Let's go see what those are telling us at this stage. So what we know right now, five-hour time frame, uh, bottom of its profile, in essence, is held. The same thing for the 240s. Well, it's green oscillator and change line. 
You do have a hammer candle that looks to be forming here, but this candle will not complete for another 15 minutes, so I don't know whether it will be a hammer or not. It is going to be bar number eight. But in order for a TD9 count pattern to form, the close uh, at 2 o'clock is going to have to be below 37.6625. All right, enough with the ES Mini. Let's go take a look at something else. How about Goldilocks? Let's go take a gold and silver. Let's actually start with silver. So let's take a look at silver, which has been, been on a tremendous run out here. And uh, today it may be forming, may be forming a sell the D-point pattern. So what you and I want to do is look to see where silver may be pulling back to. So we've got the silver charts out here. You've got a bearish engulfing candle as we speak right now. That may not turn out to be a bearish engulfing candle at day's end. If it does, then it suggests that what silver wants to do is pull back to test its oscillator and change line, which changed colors yesterday. And that would then take us down in towards the 1948 level. Got wave number seven pattern on a five-hour time frame chart out here, price below the bottom of its profile, suggesting lower price as well. TD9 count on the 240, suggests 1925 as a target. We said 1948 on the uh, daily time frame. TD9 count bottom uh, appears to be forming on the 120-minute time frame at the profile support. TD9 count bottom is not going to complete as we come into the 12 noon time frame and the 60 minute time frame, unless we see a pullback in the next 13 minutes. And that would require a close below 2032. We're at 2043 right now. So if we do get a close below 2032 at 12 noon, then you've got a TD9 count bottom on the 60 minute. 15 minutes got a Rosemont indicator bottom, price above profiles. That suggests a further rally. 10 minutes says it suggests a further rally. Hmm, 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 hmm. Confusing messages, confusing messages out here. The daily is the one that's going to be the uh, one to really focus in on. So if you do get that bearish reversal candle, it does suggest we should see some choppiness and a further pullback into in silver and at 1948 being the target area. I request this popped up in the den from McGuppy, who wants to take a look at uh, Pan American Silver. So that makes a lot of sense after just taking a look at this silver out here. P -A -A -S is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's get that on the uh, screen here for uh, McGuppy, and let's go take a look at uh, what it is signaling to you and I. So Pan American Silver trading right now back below the top of its daily profile. The top of that profile is at 1535. Oh, there's a brand new profile. That's interesting. This is not going to show up on this system here. Um, McGuppy, but on my black background system, there's a new profile that has formed its below price. That's a bullish message. It does not mean that price will not pull back further. The pullback that where we could see price pull back to would be 1535. The top of that new profile almost lines up with that red oscillator and change line. On a weekly time frame, you have a buy the D point pattern as well. This suggests that over time price should go target 1796. On a monthly time frame, we don't have a bottom signal out here. The daily, was there a bottom signal? Yeah, I'm sure there was a buy the D point. If there was on a uh, weekly, there most certainly was on the daily time frame. So what does this say? What was your question? Look at gold, silver, and Pan American silver. Got it. So we already took a look at silver out here. Um, let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart, intraday, for Pan American silver and uh, see if uh, it's giving you and I any kind of signals out here. So on a 30-minute basis... You certainly get a sell the D point pattern, the little dark cloud cover. Here's the new profile, a new profile overhead on the 30 minute. Man, talk about these markets generating confusing signals. So that says overhead supply and that price may want to head lower or in fact should head lower out here. So with regard to Pan American Silver, this is suggesting the 30 minute chart is suggesting that we should see a further move lower. And I would say that that range could be down to 1551 up to 1530, 1551 to 1535 would really be the target area. That's what the charts are communicating to us at 1149, McGuppy. So I hope that helps you out. The last thing was to take a look at Goldilocks out here. Let me see if we can flip back to our intraday charts out here. Let's put up the gold contract, see what kind of signals we might get off of it. Give me a moment get this populated here. We may have to finish. Take a look at gold. We get back from this break. We've got about uh, maybe 15 seconds or so. What gold did was it got up towards its TD9 count breakdown area. That's at the 1742 area. Support for gold would be 1695.70. That is the uh, top of its daily profile. Got a TD9 count top on the 240. 
trading into support, you got to watch the 1706.90 level. To close below that, we're headed to 1667. The 120-minute chart may form a TD nine-count bottom pattern out here. We'll come back to this as soon as the break is up. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So back to uh, gold out here. We're going to find out just how strong gold is. What I mean by that is you've got some nice valid tops out here on the intraday time frame charts and price all pulling back to support areas. The 240, we talked about its bullish structured profile. The 120-minute chart is going to complete a, a TD 9-count bottom at 12 noon. Now, remember, it's a two-hour time frame chart. And it can be the bar following bar number nine that identifies the low of that pattern. You've got breakout support at 1706.40. Uh, you've got a, a wave seven bottom on the 30-minute time frame chart. But price has been unable to take out that red oscillator and change on it. If you can do that, really, the level it needs to take out to tell us about strength is 1721.40. Bottom patterns on the 10 and the 15-minute uh, basis. So we're about to see, you know, you, gold should bottom basically right between now and 2 p.m., if not now as we uh, speak out there. It would be helpful for uh, the uh, price to close above 17.2140. That would add to the idea that a bottom has formed. Two more requests that have come in. We'll try to get to those. One from uh, Hector, who wants to know, is it uh, is now the time to unload on uh, Exxon Mobil? And I think the answer to that is uh, no. It's looking very strong. Daily, weekly, and monthly out here. Daily today, taking out a TD9 count breakout 
uh, level. You've got volume today so far, 15 million shares moving into a swing point that had volume of 23 million shares. That says absolutely positively not, unless you really want to sell, Hector. There's nothing against selling and taking a profit. But you're moving to that swing point with volume suggests a test of that swing point high. And that's up at the 101.56 level. You're above profile on the weekly, above its green oscillator and change line. That says it wants to move higher. You're above profile uh, and the uh, green oscillator and change on the monthly. That says it wants higher price as well. If I uh, look at the, well, I won't look at the 30-minute chart out here. It says stay long. Tesla, TSLA, is the uh, second request. This one coming in from... Um, I'm not sure who. Oh, Michael P. Michael P. Nice to hear from you, Michael. I was short Tesla just covered. Does it look like it may make a move lower? So Tesla, it does look like it wants to move lower. And that's if it closes low 236.89. It's negating right now. I don't know what it'll be like at the end of the day, but right now it's negating a daily TD nine count bottom. So odds favor, pull back to about the 222.58 level. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks again for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow.